Did you know that in a head-to-head -head competition, a simple curved blade from the 8th century can still beat a modern gas-powered machine? You've been told that newer is always better, that progress means more complexity and more power. But what if the most perfect tools ever invented are thousands of years old, sitting quietly in your grandfather's barn? Today on Stellar Eureka, we're uncovering 10 ancient farm tools so perfectly designed they're still in use after a thousand years or more. These are not relics, they are masterclasses in efficiency that modern technology often can't match. And wait until you see the 70,000 year old tool that shaped civilizations from Egypt to New Zealand. After this, you'll never look at a simple tool the same way again. This isn't the symbol of death you see in movies. This is a revolutionary tool for life. While its precise origins are lost to time, and it was little used in the ancient world, the scythe's true moment arrived with the farming innovations of the Carolingian era. Around the 8th century, it exploded into widespread use across Europe. For the first time, farmers could harvest and store huge amounts of hay, allowing their livestock to survive harsh winters. This simple tool fueled a massive expansion of agriculture. Ancient blacksmiths created two genius designs. The English scythe had a heavy, rigid blade for tough jobs. But the Austrian scythe had a lighter, softer blade that could be sharpened right in the field using a small hammer and anvil. This process, called peening, thinned and hardened the metal edge without grinding it away, meaning a farmer's most vital tool could last a lifetime. Now for the part that seems impossible. In an open field, a skilled scyther isn't just quieter and cleaner than a gas-powered string trimmer, they are faster. This has been proven year after year at the Green Scythe Fair in the United Kingdom. In official mow-off competitions, human-powered scythes consistently beat their gas-guzzling opponents in both speed and the quality of the cut. The long, curved handle, or snaith, is a perfectly engineered ergonomic system that turns the body's momentum into a flawless, sweeping cut. It was the perfection of cutting things down. But to build a world, humanity needed a tool that perfected the art of shaping things up. And that invention was already ancient when the first scythe was forged. This tool is prehistoric. The adze is one of humanity's earliest specialized woodworking tools with the earliest examples dating back approximately 70,000 years to the Middle Stone Age. Its design is a work of pure genius. Unlike an axe blade, which is parallel to the handle, the adze blade is set at a right angle like a hoe. This simple twist changes everything, making it a tool for shaping and smoothing wood, not just splitting it. This single invention powered craftsmanship across the globe. Ancient Egyptians used the adze to build the intricate furniture, boats, and coffins buried in the tombs of the pharaohs. Thousands of miles away, Maori artisans in New Zealand used adzes made of sacred greenstone, or ponamu, to carve their canoes and ceremonial houses with breathtaking detail. Today, the adze remains essential for artisans who require a level of control that power tools cannot provide. Traditional boat builders use it to shape the complex curves of a ship's hull, and log home builders use it to create the beautiful hand-hewn texture on massive timbers, something no machine can quite replicate. The physics of how a blade should enter and shape wood was mastered by our distant ancestors. The adze was a master of creation, but our next tool had a split personality. In the vineyard, it was a gentle pruner. On the battlefield, it was a knight's worst nightmare. The story of the billhook begins peacefully in the gardens and vineyards of ancient Mesopotamia over 3,000 years ago. The earliest versions were simple pruning hooks used to cultivate grapevines and trim trees. The Romans perfected its design and spread it across their vast empire, making it an essential tool for farmers everywhere. Its design is brilliantly simple a heavy, curved blade that concentrates all the force of a swing into a powerful chop combined with a sharp hook for pulling and slicing branches. It is still a primary tool for farmers and woodsmen today, especially in England, for the traditional craft of hedge laying, which is weaving living branches into natural fences. It's a knife, 
an axe, and a hook, all in one brutally effective package. But this humble farm tool has a dark secret. It became the national weapon of England. In the 15th and 16th centuries, the fact that the bill was cheap, easy to make, and every farmer already knew how to wield one with deadly skill, meant entire armies of billmen could be raised almost overnight. When mounted on a long pole, it became the terrifying English bill. In battle, it was devastating. The hook could snag a knight's plate armor and rip him from his horse. The heavy blade could then crush his helmet. At the famous Battle of Agincourt in 1415, English billmen were crucial in the brutal hand-to-hand -hand fighting that destroyed the French cavalry. The power of a single person with a sharp tool is immense. But what happens when you connect that ingenuity to the strength of an animal? You get an invention that allows humanity to cultivate the entire planet. Meet the ancestor of all plows. The Ard, or scratch plow, first appeared during the Neolithic era around 8,000 years ago, and its invention is directly tied to the domestication of cattle. Its design is simplicity itself. A wooden spike, sometimes tipped with stone or iron, that is dragged through the earth. But here is the critical difference. Unlike a modern plow, the Ard doesn't turn the soil over, it just scratches a shallow furrow, creating a perfect little trench for planting seeds. For thousands of years, people thought this was a primitive design. They were wrong. For many environments, it's a genius design. By not inverting the soil, the Ard leaves leftover plant matter on the surface. This acts as a natural mulch, preventing precious moisture from evaporating and stopping the topsoil from blowing away in the wind. This ancient technique is now being hailed as a cutting-edge agricultural breakthrough called conservation tillage. It's a modern method designed to preserve soil health and prevent erosion, but the Neolithic Ard was doing it thousands of years ago. The Ard allowed early farmers to move beyond small garden plots and begin cultivating broader fields of grain, enough to produce food surpluses and support the rise of the world's first cities. Archaeologists can still see the proof today. Preserved under ancient burial mounds, they find crisscrossing ard marks scratched into the subsoil. The ard allowed farmers to plant on a scale never seen before, but to reap that reward, they needed an even older tool, one that predates farming itself and made the entire agricultural revolution possible. Before the plow, there was the sickle. The tool is so ancient, it predates farming itself. Archaeologists have found sickles with flint blades dating back more than 12,000 years, tools so efficient that their basic design has barely changed in millennia. The design is so perfect, it has barely changed. The curved blade allows a harvester to hook a cluster of grain stalks and slice through them with a single, efficient motion. The first sickles used razor-sharp pieces of flint set into a handle made of wood or bone. Ancient engineers in Mesopotamia even created high-tech ceramic sickles, fired in kilns, to be incredibly hard and durable. While giant combine harvesters handle industrial farms, the sickle is still the tool of choice for millions of people around the world. It's used to harvest grain in tight spaces, on steep hillsides where machines can't go, and for specialty crops that would be damaged by rough mechanical harvesting. But the sickle isn't just a tool. It's the tool that triggered the single biggest change in human history. Most scholars now believe that the sheer efficiency of the sickle is what allowed our ancestors to gather enough wild grain to make it a reliable food source. This led directly to the idea of deliberately planting seeds. Harvesting millions of stalks of grain is a monumental task, but it all begins with a single seed placed in a single hole by a tool so simple and perfect, its design hasn't changed in 2,000 years. This tool is the ultimate example of a design so perfect it cannot be improved. First recorded in Roman times, the dibber or dibble is a simple pointed stick, sometimes with a T-shaped handle for comfort. Its job is brilliantly simple, to poke a perfect uniform hole in the soil for planting a seed, a seedling, or a bulb. That's it. Its design has stayed exactly the same for 2,000 years because there's nothing that needs changing. 
Long before the tool had a formal name, farmers were using bones, sticks, or even their fingers to get the same results. It remains an essential tool for gardeners everywhere, enabling precise spacing and planting depth with minimal effort and minimal disturbance to the surrounding soil. Before modern seed drills were invented, the dibber was a high-tech farming tool. In the 18th and 19th centuries, farm workers used long-handled dibbers to plant entire fields. One person would walk the rows, methodically poking holes in the ground, and a second person would follow behind, dropping a seed into each hole. The dibber is a tool with zero moving parts, zero need for fuel, and zero room for improvement. It is the physical proof of the principle that the simplest solution is often the most elegant and the most enduring. While we invent complex, expensive machines to do the same job, the 2,000-year-old Roman dibber remains faster and more efficient for many small-scale tasks. Once the seed is planted and the grain is grown and harvested, a new problem arises. How do you separate the valuable food from the worthless stock? For thousands of years, the answer was the flail. Its design is another example of simple genius, a long wooden handle connected by a flexible joint to a shorter, heavier club. This club part is called a swipple. A worker would lay the harvested grain on a hard, clean surface called a threshing floor and repeatedly beat it with the flail. The heavy impact of the swipple would shatter the seed heads, releasing the grain. You can see. Giant threshing machines rendered the flail obsolete on large farms by the 1800s, but for small-scale farmers, the flail remains a practical, low-cost way to process grain. It allows for careful threshing that doesn't damage the straw, which can then be used for other valuable purposes, like weaving baskets or animal bedding. After you've threshed your grain, you're left with a messy pile of heavy, edible seeds mixed with the light, inedible bits of stalk and husk called chaff. To separate this chaotic mix, ancient farmers relied on the winnowing basket. This wide, shallow basket, also known as a fanner, is the key to a perfectly simple, zero-energy purification system. The technique is pure genius. You simply scoop up the grain and chaff mixture and toss it gently into the air on a day with a light breeze. The heavy grain falls straight back down into the basket, but the light, worthless chaff is caught by the wind and blown away. It's a perfect separator that requires no fuel, no machines, and no complex parts. This ancient technology was the backbone of the American rice industry for over 200 years, from the late 1600s well into the 20th century. Enslaved people from West Africa brought with them not only the knowledge of how to cultivate rice, but also the ancient craft of making these specific coiled baskets. The beautiful sweet grass baskets still made by artisans in the low country of South Carolina today are a direct continuation of this tradition. The specific coiled basket making techniques used in the American South are nearly identical to those still used in West African nations like Senegal and Angola, a tangible link to African heritage that survived and endured. All these tools from the plow to the basket rely on human energy. But to truly scale up civilization, our ancestors needed to harness a power far greater than their own. They needed an engine, and they built one out of wood. The Ard plow, which we saw earlier, marked a turning point in agriculture, but it was the ox yoke that truly unlocked its power. By allowing farmers to harness the strength of two animals as one, the yoke transformed the simple plow from a garden tool into the engine behind civilization. This carved wooden frame joined oxen in synchronized effort, multiplying the force they could deliver and the fields they could open. Archaeological evidence, like wear marks on ancient cattle horns, suggests that yokes were in use as early as 2900 BC, nearly 5,000 years ago. This revolutionary technology allowed farmers to cultivate far more land than was ever possible with human muscle alone. It supercharged food production and was a critical step in the growth of ancient civilizations, so critical, in fact, that we explored its history in our video, 10 Ancient Farming Secrets That Built Civilizations. While tractors dominate modern industrial farming, draft animals are still the primary source of power for millions of small farmers around the world today. 
the yoke remains the most efficient and humane way to harness their incredible strength. A well-fitted, custom-carved yoke distributes the load properly across the animal's body, allowing a team to pull its full potential comfortably and safely. What's truly mind-blowing is that the specific design of a yoke is a cultural fingerprint. The head yoke attached to the horns and was the preferred design of Spanish farmers who brought it to Latin America. The neck yoke rests on the shoulders and was an English tradition brought to North America by colonists. None of the incredible tools on this list, the scythe, the sickle, the adze, the bill hook, would be anything more than a useless piece of metal without a sharp edge. The technology that creates that edge is the oldest and most fundamental of all, the whetstone. This may be one of humanity's oldest technologies. The earliest evidence of humans using stones to grind and sharpen other tools comes from a rock shelter in Australia and dates back an incredible 65,000 years. Our Paleolithic ancestors were sharpening their tools long before they ever thought about planting a seed. The principle has never changed. A whetstone is simply a piece of natural stone with a fine abrasive grit. When you rub a metal blade against it at the correct angle, it removes microscopic particles of steel, creating a new razor-sharp edge. Some natural stones, like the famous Novaculite quarried in Arkansas, are so perfectly suited for sharpening that they are still prized by craftsmen today. And here's a fun fact. The name whetstone has nothing to do with water. The Old English word wet simply means to sharpen. In 1823, a New Hampshire farmer discovered the stones in his pasture were perfect for sharpening his scythe, launching the American sharpening stone industry. It is the silent, fundamental power behind every tool on this list, the ancient technology that gives every perfect design its edge. Progress isn't always about reinventing the wheel. Some tools were so well designed, so perfectly adapted to their task, that they've barely changed in a thousand years. You can mechanize them, you can scale them, but you can't beat them. Not then, and in many cases, not even now. From curved blades to sharpened sticks, from baskets to yokes, each one tells the story of human ingenuity at its most elemental. Which ancient tool surprised you the most? Let us know in the comments. And if you believe old wisdom still deserves a place in the modern world, like, subscribe, and share this with someone who appreciates a tool that just works. This is Stellar Eureka, signing off.